Well, what I want to do is I want to explain to you a little bit about what's going to happen next in regards to the baptism of five people this morning, which means that we need to back up. And before we talk about baptism, we need to talk about the gospel of Jesus again. Um, And really, in particular, about the gospel, we need to think about three things. We need to think about the truth about sin, and we need to think about the the good news of Jesus, and we need to think about um, response to Jesus, the right response to Jesus. So we have five believers in Jesus Christ coming forward to be baptized this morning. The Bible tells us the truth about ourselves. The way that the Bible describes human beings like me and you is, is, is this way. Here's the list. We're sinners. That means we're transgressors or we're trespassers. Wherever God has set himself as the line, we we pass it. We step where we should not step. The Bible calls us enemies of God. The Bible says that we are rebellious against God. The Bible even says that we are hostile and engaged in evil deeds before God and against him. The Bible says that we are also excluded from the life, the very life that is God. The Bible tells us that we are dead in those sins and transgressions. We are called children of God's wrath. We are worthy in that condition of His righteous and eternal wrath being poured out upon us, not because those offenses are eternal in nature, but because the one who is offended is eternal. His standard is eternal. And in that condition, the Bible calls us helpless. And what that means is that we can do nothing in and of ourselves to change ourselves from that condition. There's no self-help that you or I can do to improve upon that deplorable condition before God. Once you've faced that truth about yourself, before God, you then have good news presented to you. And here's the good news. The Bible tells us that Jesus himself bore sin in his body on the cross. On the cross. But but it wasn't his own sin that he was bearing in his body while he was suffering and dying on the cross. Jesus personally knew no sin himself But he willingly substituted himself in the place of sinners at the cross in order to bear sin out of God's sight forever. His father looked upon his son there as if the sin that was upon him was his own. And so the father turned his wrath um, away from the sinner and turned it toward his son on the cross and he poured out every drop of his wrath on his son at the cross in the place of sinners. The penalty that the sinner had to pay was paid by Jesus instead on the cross. Forgiveness of sin was purchased because of what the son and the father did together at the cross. Jesus died and Jesus was buried. God raised him from the dead three days later. And currently Jesus is at the right hand of his Father in heaven until it is time for him to come back and judge the world and reign on it. Once you've seen this good news concerning what God did through his son Jesus, you can then move to what's the right response to that message of good news. Jesus did this for sinners. Which ones? The Bible tells us that Jesus did this great work at the cross for every single sinner who believes in him. When we read Acts 10.43 earlier, it says that everyone who believes in him has forgiveness of sins. Everyone who believes has this forgiveness of sin. The right response is to believe that God did what he said he did at the cross through his son for you, to entrust your life to Jesus Christ, to no longer trust in yourself. You see, faith is that great act of looking away from yourself to God in Christ. Jesus is the focal point of faith. 
And all who did this in the past, all who will even do it in this moment right now, and all who will do it in the future before Jesus comes back, those are the ones for which forgiveness of sins is promised. On the basis of that faith in Jesus Christ, God declares over that believer that he is righteous in God's sight. God looks at that believer as if sin has never touched his life or her life or ever could. That believer trying to do good deeds has nothing to do with the declared righteousness that God puts over that believer on the basis of faith alone. So you have to know the truth about sin. You have to then hear the good news of Jesus and you have to have the right response to this Jesus. And then that makes you ready to talk about the waters of baptism. These five today profess that that biblical response to Jesus is their own. That they are indeed believers in Jesus Christ. They took a couple of baptism classes. We walked through what the gospel was. We walked through what baptism is. We talked about what it does and what it does not do. They, each one of them, of the five, have had elder interviews where they've been able to talk about their faith in Jesus Christ with an elder. And really what baptism is, is it's as simple as obedience to Jesus. Being baptized in water is as simple as obedience to Jesus. He has determined that one of the very first acts of obedience to him is to be baptized, to go all the way underwater and to come all the way out of water in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And these five today just simply want to obey Jesus Christ and be baptized because of their belief in his saving work accomplished for them at the cross. Water baptism is also as simple as public identification. What they want to do this morning is publicly identify with all of you who believe in Jesus. When a believer gets baptized, the believer is declaring before the public that's listening that he or she is a member of that group of people that follows Jesus Christ, the church. All of you will know today that these five, as believers in Jesus, they want to be identified with you as a believer in Jesus Christ. So let's hear them boast in their Savior. Um, when you're obedient to Jesus Christ, sometimes there's a high price for you to pay in being obedient. I just encourage you as you listen to them, pray for them. They need your encouragement. They need to have the strength of the Lord and the power of his indwelling spirit upon them. And uh, you're just going to rejoice in what you hear from them. So I'm gonna ask Jesse. Jesse Britton, come on up and tell us what Jesus has done in your life. Hello, uh, my name is Jesse Britton, and um, I'm 17, year, 17 years old. I'm a junior in high school. Um, I go to Tempe Prep Academy, and um, I'm the oldest brother of seven, seven boys. So here's my testimony. Raised in a Christian home and blessed with God-glorifying parents is one of the biggest gifts in life that a child can receive. I received this gift when I was a child. The young man I am today has to do with the upbringing I had in a home where striving to be like Christ was emulated to me by my parents and sin was looked down upon in a large way. Sunday service every Sunday as a child was fun and exciting to be a part of. I, as a young child, knew most of the answers to the questions, knew how to act well, and tried to be a people pleaser in how I lived my life. Saying a prayer to God to save me with my father when I was nine was sufficient in my eyes to being a believer. But instead of changing my life and following Christ wholeheartedly as a young fourth grader in elementary school, I turned away from a life pleasing to God. I, in my ignorance and selfishness, chose to have friends that were not good for me. I chose in my actions to engage in foolish and sinful actions, including using a foul mouth, disrespecting my teachers, making crude and despicable jokes, and being mean to people that I did not like. This was the life that I was living in fourth and fifth grade, a life displeasing to God and not living for Him. My sinfulness carried over into my family life. Oftentimes, the things I did at, at school, I did to my brothers and parents at home. Arguing with my parents and being a bossy brother is how I lived. 
I was not being the leader I should have been, being the oldest brother and example to my many young brothers. In sixth grade, I went to a private Christian school where my dad taught, and it was my first experience at a school that did not tolerate disrespect and the sin that I was living in. In every class, my classmates and I were read the Word of God, and all of our classes were in relation to living a life for Christ. In my sixth grade year, I had an inward battle with my desire to sin and a desire to live for Christ. I continued to go back and forth between these two things, but was not consistent in choosing one. I, being a disrespectful student at times, received discipline as I was being brought the Word of God daily. My seventh grade year was when the Lord changed my life forever. Daily being exposed to the Word of God and being taught about Him daily by teachers and by my parents, my eyes finally opened up to the sinful life that I was living and what a wretch I was. With the providence of our great God in that year, I changed my life and decided to live for Christ again. I, des I decided to live for Him, and it carried over to everything I did in my life. Finally, being a leader to my brothers, respecting my parents and teachers, and living a life for God was my goal. Understanding the gospel and living it out according to His will is what I strove for and now strive for. Ephesians 2.8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. God has saved me, and I owe my life to Him. Mm -hmm. Knowing that I am a disciple of Christ, I can carry out His plan for His followers. Matthew 28.19-20 says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesse, based on your testimony and profession of faith, you're now baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We get to have another Briton brother come up. Caleb, why don't you come on up? Hello, I'm Caleb Britton. I'm in seventh grade and I'm 13. Today I want to tell you my testimony. A Christian is someone who truly believes in Jesus Christ and the gospel, which is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. On the cross, when Jesus died, he was the ultimate sacrifice for sin, and now Christians can repent without having to sacrifice an animal for their sins. I was saved by God through his grace. I was born into a Christian family, but I was not following God. My dad and mom continued to teach me about God, but I was not heeding their instruction. Then about one or two years ago, my dad started to teach me and my brothers the word of God through devotionals. Through that, I was awakened to the truth that I need God in my life. I needed the forgiveness of my sins that I could only have by repenting to God for my... I repented of my sins to God and my rebellion to him. I started taking devotionals more seriously and learning more about God. Just recently, I learned that God commands Christians to be baptized. I also know that baptism is a public declaration of my faith. For those two reasons, I am getting baptized today. From now on, I want to be a leader for Christ, teaching people not to fall into temptation, but live in the way that God wants us to live. Um, moms and dads, um, teaching your, your kids to, to read the Bible and to draw near to God through his word is very important, is it not? Yeah, let's go get wet, come on. Caleb. Caleb. Based on your testimony, profession of faith, 
You're now baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> There is yet one more Britain boy. So, uh, Michael, why don't you come on up this morning? Hello, I'm Micah Britton. I'm 15 and a freshman in high school. Uh, this is my testimony. When I was growing up, I would go to Sunday school and my dad would read me the Bible, but I would not listen to the meaning and take it to heart. Then, when I went to summer Bible camp in elementary, I heard and God opened up my ears. I realized that I was sinful, dead in my sin, rebellious, and an enemy of God. As Ephesians 2, 1 through 2 says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walked, following the course of the world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. I also realized that nothing that I can do or my parents do can save me from the wrath of God. I knew that I needed to be saved from my sins and that I needed forgiveness. I think I am thankful to God. I am thankful that God sent his son to die and Jesus, who was perfect and never sinned in his life, suffered a brutal death on a cross and took the wrath of God so that so that I could be saved. Colossians 1, 13 through 14 says, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. That day I believed and repented of my sins and I was saved. I decided to live for God and to trust my, and to try my best to obey His commandments. I didn't realize that God wanted all believers to be baptized for a long time. Recently, I've been aware that God wants me to be baptized and declare publicly that I have been saved by Jesus Christ, who received the wrath of God, so I can be saved from eternal death. Amen. That's good. Let's go on over. Michael, Micah. Micah, sorry. Based on your testimony and profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Jacob, that's like a bear hug baptism. That's awesome getting me too. That's good. Um, next, we have Artem Klingenberg. Artem, why don't you come up and tell us about your Savior, Jesus? I'm Artem Klingenberg, and I'm 15 years old. I was born in Ukraine and stayed in three different orphanages. In the orphanage, I had to look after myself. There was no one who cared about me. When I was 10 years old, I was adopted by two Christ-loving parents who taught me and raised me up in love. But as the years went on, I hated when my parents or any authority in my life to tell me what to do. I wanted to be my own master and seeking worldly, worldly pleasures, but I was never satisfied. Um, when I was told what to do, I did it, but I did not do it with a joyful heart. When people looked at me, they, they saw the outside of me, which was pretending to be happy with my life. But in the inside of me did not reflect what everyone saw. The Bible says that the human heart is the most deceitful thing above all else. I was deceived. I was deceived when I was. I was deceived when I thought I was my own master. By what I did not realize, I was a slave to sin. Then I started to to attend student ministries. In the small group, I was asked if I was a Christian, and I said no, for I was content to be my own master. That week, by God's grace and mercy, he softened my heart to realize John 3.16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him uh, shall, have, shall not perish but have eternal life. That night of my 14th birthday, I repented of my sins and became a slave to Jesus. I want to get baptized not only, to, not, not only because I want to obey him, but also, to tell everyone what God has done in my life and to boast in my Master and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Up, 
Artem, based on your profession, testimony of faith, baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Finally, Sharon Diggs, would you please come up and boast in your Savior? Thank you. You're welcome. Good morning. My name is Sharon Diggs, and I'd like to share my testimony with you all. I was born into a Catholic family, baptized as a baby, and confirmed when I reached the seventh grade. I attended private Catholic school during my formative years, but began to question certain practices in Catholicism. Even though I was taught who Jesus was, I really didn't know him. I don't recall any expository teaching, just traditional rituals. It just felt so impersonal. I struggled with this lack of connection to him and began doubting my faith, especially after my parents divorced during my senior year of high school. As a result, I live my life according to my rules, selfishly and vindictively, toward all the people in my life that had hurt me or mistreated me. I trusted in nobody but myself. This downward spiral inevitably affected all my relationships, causing me to question my real purpose in this life. I started seeking him at a deeper level during my college years. It was shortly after I graduated back in 2000 that he surrounded me with people who helped me during my journey to really get to know him. I debated countless hours with my then Christian boss and with my husband who I began to date around that time. This piqued my curiosity which led me to attend a Christian church, the church at Rocky Peak in California in 2001, where I began my spiritual journey. I attended Bible studies to learn how to study his word and question everything. I watched Bible movies, read his word, attended small groups. Observed the lives of Christians inside and outside the church. Prayed and prayed, realizing more each day. Realizing more each day that passed that my soul was in jeopardy, I fell to my knees out of fear and submitted to God as my Savior shortly after 2002. However, since then, I've struggled over the years in submitting my life completely to Him. He was my Savior, but I struggled relentlessly over His Lordship over me. I still needed some control over my life, which still led me to sin. You're doing great. Just take your time, you're okay. I married my husband in 2003. I still carried with me all the bottled up hurt and ink from the past blamed others, and kept score of all wrongs being done against me, especially in my marriage. I allowed my hardened heart to take control, punishing those around me. I didn't dare allow myself to be vulnerable to anybody. Instead of focusing on God's love for me, I was consumed with the hate that had built up in my heart for all humanity. Inevitably, God placed me in trial after trial over the past 10 years to bring me closer to him. It wasn't until this past year where I finally imploded within and my relationship with my husband shattered. All due to fear and unforgiveness. I was forced to confront and examine my heart how could I expect a right relationship with anybody if my relationship with Christ is not right? I had clearly been living in my life 
in disobedience to God, I had failed to rely on the one who has shown me the true meaning of love. As blackened as my heart has been, he has shown me grace, mercy, and true forgiveness. It is because of his love for me that I desire to live my life according to his word. He calls those that believe him to be our Lord and Savior to turn from our sin and be baptized. I submit my life to the Lord, not out of fear, but out of my love for him and what he has done for me. He is my Lord and Savior. I believe that the word of God is infallible. I believe that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty of death for our sins, and whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Good job. Can I have your glasses? I'll hold them. I'll take that. Sharon, based on your testimony, profession of faith, you're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Praise God for his goodness and his kindness to sinners like us. Let's pray for them, shall we? Heavenly Father, we lift up to you Jesse and Caleb, Micah, and Artem, and Sharon. And Lord, when one of your children obeys you, it's very pleasing to you. And I pray, God, that they would know your pleasure know that you are rejoicing over their eagerness to follow your son, Jesus. Lord, you get all of the credit for that. That has nothing to do with them. For you put them in your favor, not by their good works, but you put them in your favor by your son's hard work at the cross for them. Lord, I pray that you would take the good news of your son, Jesus, and that you would press it into the lives of those who are here who may not have yet believed your son, let them see the danger of what happens when we die once and come to judgment. Let them see the, the amazing hope that Jesus offers those who will trust in him that, they might suffer, that he might suffer their wrath in their place. Be merciful, God, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.